driving like 100 miles a day, you want to go in something comfortable. A Lexus is plenty comfortable. A Cadillac is plenty comfortable. I'm not even driving that many miles, right? I wouldn't be driving. Why would I need a Rolls Royce? So I just think that, like, even if I could afford it, I wouldn't buy one. You know, it might be fun to go on a test drive on a Ferrari or, or a Lamborghini. Speaking of going for a test drive, like, I've met a lot of women. And here I'm we like, go. <laughs> like, I'm not going to marry this girl. Right. You know, she's a little bit nutty, a little bit slutty. But it's like, oh, man, I'd love to go for a test drive. Right. Oh, man, I'd love to take her around the block. It's like, oh, man, all those legs. I'd love to imagine those wrapped around me. Or, oh, man, check out that rack. You know, if I could just get my hands on that, it's like I'd go to heaven. Or the rack and pinion. <laughs> Look at the rack and pinion just steering on that think, chick. <laughs> wow, she's got a pretty little mouth. <laughs> did you ever see Deliverance? Uh, yes, I did. I, remember, I read the got, book too. Maybe you got a pretty mouth there. <laughs> oh, you're sick. You're like, sick. Like, and they'll squeal like a pig. <laughs> you're sick. You're sick. So, like, sometimes I want to like. Okay, I don't want to marry the girl, I just want to get a deliverance on her. <laughs> Why do you have to use... Oh, yeah, yeah, Did yeah. you see the kite runner? Well, I want to say what Bubba Matsia wrote. He wrote, conspicuous consumption is dangerous. because the guy will get jealous, and it might cause it to grow. Oh, so if I... So in other words, if I drove a... Um, Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce, the guy, guy, guy and we're going to... And some throw, other Jew might... They're going to kill us because... Because Rabbi Rabs has a... But did you see the kite runner? No. Oh. Well, sometimes I want to get a kite runner on women too, but it's like, at least just like, I'd have this girlfriend and I'd grab her and I'd go, kite runner! Because it's like a very traumatic scene where something happens to a little boy in there. You know what though, I want to say something. Every rabbi of every major shul has an expensive luxury car. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. yeah. You don't see like, like, yeah. You know, Rabbi so and so of yeah. a congregation with five thousand people or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. And he's driving a Toyota Corolla. You never see that. Like, well, a Toyota in... Corolla is a pretty luxurious car. I have a Toyota Corolla. Oh, it's a piece of crap. Okay, the what 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 a, a shul rabbi always has a Lincoln Town Car, a Cadillac, a um, a Lexus. Uh, give me some more that they, they might drive. They're not going to drive a Mercedes, only because it's going to upset the delicate sensitivities of the Holocaust survivors. Right? It's like, oh, scandal, he's driving a German car. So they're not going to drive a German car, but they will drive a Japanese car, and they'll be in a Lexus. They would never be in a Camry or a Corolla. It's only a Lexus. They're going to be in a Lincoln Town Car or Cadillac. Give me another one. Do you know any other cars that these people drive? I'm not good with these material things. They might, oh, in the old days you might see one in an upscale New Yorker, like a Buick. You know, a, a high-scale Buick, but I don't think so today. So the, the rabbis of the the major modern Orthodox congregations in Piga Robinson would, would all make uh, north of six figures. Like the rabbi Bet Jacob would, would make well, I hope so. something like $250,000 a year. Oh, that's and a a housing allowance and day school tuition paid for all the kids. Yeah, well, I would so hope the he, package it would amount yeah, to I, I three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand a year. I would hope he gets some money because if he doesn't, then no one else is ever going to get any money because that's the biggest shul. Yeah, that's the biggest shul west of the Mississippi. West up in the Mississippi. You remember, it's in Beverly Hills. Yeah, I mean, if you can't get a nice salary there, then no one's going to get a nice salary. So, but like a rabbi at uh, Eula, you know, he might bring home what fifty thousand dollars. It's because he's a Rebbe. Rebbe's always get smacked. <laughs> Rebbe's get dumped on. See, this is the problem with... with this right here is the problem with the from community. A Rebbe... There is, the Torah says the greatest thing in the world to be is a Rebbe because you're... you're it's like... You're, it's like your son. What is a Rebbe as opposed to a rabbi? A no, it's like a teacher. A te okay. a, 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 someone who's a mechanic to... To, to kids, you yeah. know, someone who teaches kids Torah, it's like he's, it, well, it's like he's giving the kid life because Torah is life of a Jew, right? And he's breathing life into a child. He's creating Jews. He's saving lives. He's, he's. He, it, this is. There's nothing greater than that. And, and and how does the community reward him? Because it's like a bottom of the scale 
payments, because they make a big deal about the shul rob who stands there every week and goes, oh, uh, today's bar mitzvah is going to be brought to you by Kellogg's, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. So, you know, and, and, and this guy makes the buku money. Tor never talks about it, that guy. There is no such guy. The, the Torah concept, you know, is this guy doesn't exist. This is like a new thing. The, the idea of like the shul rabbi is almost like the um, Christian concept of the church priest. It's, it's not even a Jewish concept. Uh, that's not part of our tradition. But the rabbi who teaches your kids, that's something honorable. That needs to be paid for. So the amount of money that, 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 that's given to like these shul clowns, these puppet rabbis, these pulpit, pulpit rabbis, excuse me, that's the kind of money that should be given to the teachers and the haters of the Yula and the Torah Sandus. They should be making home the big money because they're the ones that are doing the big mitzvah. I also felt that way when I was working as a rabbi in Kashrus. You know, I learned all these halachas, I got all this experience, I had all this knowledge and expertise in in the laws of kashrus and how it applies in in, in, in in companies and manufacturing plants in the Goyesha world. I had all this knowledge. I was making the food kosher so we could all eat it and I was getting paid bupkis. It wasn't right. It, it always kind of queers me out that you know, the rabbis of the day school so they get like a 20% bonus at the end of the school year. They did not molest a kid. It's like, Would you get your head out of that? Come on. Stop with that. Stop with that. And because I'm going to make a joke too, like you know, I think that 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 if you were a cautious rabbi and at the end of the year you didn't embezzle any money from the, from didn't from do any drugs, you, so didn't, you didn't do any drugs, you didn't, wife. you didn't bug it, you didn't you didn't cheat on your wife, you didn't <laughs> you didn't have different women in every city, and you didn't embezzle from the organization that you should have been given a bonus. That's how I think of it, you know. Hey, that's just our perspective. Uh, that's your mileage may vary. Like I think, I think if you actually showed up at the company, I think if you ever made an appearance at the companies you purported to do hashkacha for, you should have gotten paid extra. Yeah, go on to the next thing. So Deuteronomy chapter 15, 4 says, May there be no poor among you. And then a little while later it says, You'll always have poor among you. But it presents a picture of an ideal society where if all Israel would keep Torah law, then there will be abundance and there won't be poor people among you. But because all Israel will never all keep Torah law, there will always be poverty. There will always be poor people needing your help. The ban on consumer... Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. you, you said it again here, but you didn't read it out loud. Judas, Judaism does not extol nor glorify poverty. Poverty sucks. Why didn't you say that out loud? Because I've said it before. About right. Success. Last week, you said you've never seen anywhere in Judaism, nowhere in the Torah... Where it says poverty is great. Where poverty is great. And, 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 and yet, I've told you not once, twice, but I told you again last week... And I shot it down. You so just down. like, I, so just I, like just rescuing the rescuing the, uh, the I can't, hostage. The I captive. can't take it anymore. I can't take it because now you're going to have seen it. I was even thinking about bringing my Talmud with me today, but then I thought you would just go. Well, I can't read Aramaic, so. <laughs> but but um, I'm going to actually tell you where the Makoros are because I can't stand it anymore. Okay, this is what the Torah says. It says the poor, someone who's poor, is doing a favor to the one who gives by. Get by presenting them and giving them the opportunity for the mitzvah of giving tzedakah. So like is that first, glorifying poverty? Yeah. Is that extolling poverty? One no. second. That's in the that's in the Medrash. It's in Vayikra Rabbah four thirty four eight. Vayikra Rabbah thirty four eight in the Medrash. Look it up. When it, it's it, there's nothing wrong with being poor, because when you're poor and you accept tzedakah, there's nothing sucky about it. On um, the opposite, a person who's poor gives a tremendous, does a tremendous thing because they give others the opportunity to do the mitzvah of giving tzedakah. The Talmud tells us in Baba Basra 9a, Baba Basra 9a, one, a person that causes others to give is greater than the one who gives. 
And if you think that giving tzedakah is a great thing, you have to understand that the one who receives the tzedakah is doing an even greater thing because they're allowing 